if you just looked at me virtually, you'd think like I was the world's most embattled person in some way, you know, maybe not the world's most, but I'm up in the top 10 maybe. But in my real life, then that, like I don't have any problems. You know, I go around from town to town or from city to city and every interaction I have with people on the street is positive. They either don't know me, which is fine, or they do and then we have a positive interaction. And I've only had like three negative interactions with people in real life in the last six years. And like they stand out because they're not fun, but they're extremely rare. But online, it's like, well, 50% of the people oppose Jordan Peterson. It's like, no, they don't. It's not, it's not even 1%. So it's a, we, we're building a virtual world that doesn't sample the real world very well. And that's not much different from building a delusion. So not good. Very, very, uns, very unsettling. So, that's Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly Twitter before Elon Musk came. Yeah. Along. Well, Twitter's better, but it's still quite the snake pit. Yeah. You know, I, I, what I, one of the things I, I think might be done about that. See, I don't think that. I've, I've made this claim on Twitter that, that uh, there's something cowardly about anonymous posting, and I'm not going to retract that because I believe that in 99% of the cases that's true. Now, people say, well, you know, if you're a whistleblower, you have to be anonymous, and what about people in totalitarian states and, or yeah. in, in a company? Well, same, that's the whistleblowing problem. I think, yeah, 1% of anonymous posters are heroes, but like 80% of them are Machiavellians. And so... Well, but, but, but there's also the factor of people that don't want to get in trouble at work. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, that's you know, kind of the whistleblower problem. But not even whistleblowers. I mean, people that just have opinions that <laughs> You vary. mean that might get them in trouble with yeah. the College of Psychologists in yes. Ontario, for example. Yes. Yeah, I know. And yes. So, well, I think one of the ways of handling that technically, what I'd like to see happen at Twitter, for example, you know, not that I'm in a position to know because I know it's complicated, is I think the anonymous types should be separated from the real people. So you could go visit them and see what they have to say, but the verified people, you know, their comments are either at the top or in a different place. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think that you can, I don't think that we can set up a playable game online when the anonymous trolls have the same rights as the verified responsible people. And I also think, and I don't know what you think about this, Joe, but, you know, let's say you want to be a whistleblower, you want to say something that's going to get you in trouble at work. So you want to do it anonymously. It's like, well, maybe you're shirking your responsibility because maybe you have a responsibility, you know, and I could be persuaded alternatively, but maybe you have a responsibility if you have something to say, to say it in your own voice and to put yourself behind it, hmm. you know, and maybe take, maybe you're taking the easy way out by not doing that. And, you know, I don't want to say that about every single person who posts anonymously, but, you know, tyranny emerges when normal, honest people are now afraid to say what they think. And when the tyranny is complete in a totalitarian state, no one ever says what they think about anything. Everyone lies all the time. And I see part of the pathway to that, the unwillingness of ordinary people to take the consequences of their truthful speech. You know, and I also think that's detrimental to them because I think that you find the adventure in your life. I think this is certainly true of you. You find the adventure in your life by standing behind your words. Like that's you, right? Those are your words. If you're telling the truth, that's actually you. And there's going to be consequences. And sometimes they're going to be negative. But do you really think that the consequences of telling the truth in your own voice are negative? You think the world's structured like that? Jesus, that's a dismal view, man. Well, it depends on the amount of autonomy you have. It depends on the amount of uh, the amount of resources you have. Yeah. I mean, like, like, let's take for example, uh, nurses, nurses who had contracted COVID during the pandemic and had developed natural immunity. There was already studies that showed that that natural immunity was superior to the immunity that was imparted by the vaccine, but yet they were being mandated to take this vaccine yeah. and a lot of them had some serious apprehensions about it yeah. that were logical based on people that they knew that had adverse reactions and now we're finding out more and more how common those adverse reactions were now if these women stepped up or these men who are nurses stepped up and and said something about it publicly they would be fine yeah, well look when, when i was working as a clinician i had lots of clients who were in that position you know they were they're at work and they're being tyrannized by some well, sometimes it was DEI types and sometimes it was DEI? just yeah, diversity ex 
inclusivity and equity. Oh. You know, the, the, woke, the woke ideologues who were coming for them and not letting them say what they wanted to say politically. And sometimes they're just being tyrannized by garden variety narcissists. You know, their bosses were that sort. Yeah. And uh, it was crushing them. And, you know, it's easy to say to people like that, well, just stand up to your boss. But they often were rather constrained in their employment opportunities and they had families. And so you can't tell people, well, just go shoot off your mouth stupidly, get fired and taken out and mobbed and let your family starve. That's a pretty dumb strategy. But what we would always do in, in the therapeutic endeavor with someone in a situation like that was to situate themselves in their life so that they could afford to abide by their own truth. And so that might mean if you're in a job, let's say, where you, you don't have freedom of expression, you know, you get your, your resume or your CV polished up so that if necessary, you could make a lateral move relatively quickly. Maybe you send out some job applications just to test the market. And if you're not marketable, maybe you pop up your skills. And then maybe if you're in a position where you're vulnerable because someone else has got control over your tongue, maybe you work real hard to put some other ground under your feet so that you can't be taken out so easily.